After a bumpy start to the rollout, San Diego has ramped up vaccine access and is now leading the state at getting shots into people's arms. Thank you for joining us for the nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Today we've learned San Diego County is quite literally winning the race to vaccinate. We lead Southern California in doses administered and are one of the top cities statewide as well. It makes me feel wonderful. It, we love living here anyway, but I think that we have a certain joy of life here and we want to get on with it. So let's get vaccinated and get on with our lives. So herd immunity, which according to health experts could happen at about 75% of the population vaccinated is not far from our reach here. We are also learning more about just how well those vaccines really work. Now that millions of people nationwide have gotten them, health experts have a clearer picture of how they work in the real world. There have been a number of breakthrough cases where fully vaccinated people still caught COVID, 5,800 nationwide to be exact. But that number represents less than 1% of vaccinated people and none of them died. No one was even hospitalized. A majority were actually asymptomatic during their infection. With all of this encouraging news comes an important reminder, though, from top health experts, too. The CDC's director spoke on the Today Show this morning, sharing this reality check. We still had 57,000 cases of COVID yesterday. We still had 733 deaths. And so while we are really trying to scale up vaccination, we have this complex message that we still have hotspots in this country. And we will be looking at the outdoor uh, masking question, but it's also in the context of the fact that we still have people who are dying of COVID. Current CDC guidance says masks may not be necessary when you're outside by yourself, away from others, or with people who live in your household. But masks should still be worn during large outdoor gatherings where people are close together for a prolonged period of time. Experts at the CDC will be looking at that guidance and see if it needs any adjusting to further bring cases down. As always, one of the best tools we have against COVID besides the vaccine is testing, and that will soon become a bit easier too. CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens will soon begin selling over-the-counter tests in stores and online. You don't need a prescription. The Illum Home Test and the Abbott Binex Now Antigen Self-Test both provide results within minutes. You can also buy the Pixel by LabCorp PCR Test Home Collection Kit, but that one takes one to two days to get results. The test costs between $40 and $120 and are FDA approved. Losing your sense of taste and smell is one of these unique symptoms of the coronavirus and to help recoveries regain their taste and the joys of eating. One chef has written a cookbook specifically for COVID-19 patients. A lot of people also saying that they had COVID and their flatmate didn't and their flatmate finds the food so intense. Well, COVID related changes in taste and smell have distinct features and British chef Ryan Riley wanted to support people dealing with that issue. It's a cause he's had his eye on for a while now, also working with similar sensory changes in cancer patients. With help from a researcher at Oxford, they developed a cookbook called Taste and Flavor. Anosmia well, is the sense of smell being lost and parosmia is the sense of smell being distorted. And we knew both of those things were a big part of what COVID had caused yet not everyone knows why they were an issue. Avoiding the things that we know create flavour and um, sticking with things that are called safe foods, so things like potatoes, pasta, rice and bread. It's trying to ensure that you've got as much flavour in there without actually being detrimental to the fact that people taste things in different ways right now. If you're curious to learn more about Chef Ryan Riley's cookbook, you can search COVID-19 cookbook at NBC7.com. All right, switching gears now to another top headline. It is a tragic story out of the SeaWorld area that we've been following since late last night. Two teenagers were killed after a single car crash in Mission Bay Park. Those victims, a young man and woman, were both 19 years old. Our NBC7 crew was out at the site as family members and friends gathered to set up a memorial. Other friends of the victims were driving in separate cars last night and actually saw the truck crash. Police say the driver was speeding in the moment when he lost control and slammed into a light pole and then a street light. We're not sharing the names of the victims at this moment because their families have not all been notified. Sandag is making moves today on a future project that could make transportation across our whole county a lot easier. The agency is asking for public comment on its proposed central mobility hub project, which is being reviewed by the environmental board right now as well. You can submit your questions at the Sandag website. The hub would be a large transportation center connecting a bunch of transit options, including MTS buses, Amtrak, coaster trains, and the trolley. It would also offer direct public transportation to the airport. 
Right now, Sandag is considering building this hub west of the 5 freeway, just south of Old Town, or between the 5 and Pacific Highway south of Washington Street. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Before we go, here's a look at your current temperature. Dagmar has an extended forecast at the weather section on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. Have a good night.